Greetings. It is said that life is movement and movement is life. The very movement which is given to you by frictionless joints which don't have arthritis. So here in this video, Dr. Raju Ishwaran, a principal consultant in orthopedics at Max Hospital Shalima Bagh, I will be speaking to you on common facets of arthritis, common questions which come to your mind and common things which we can do to help treat or prevent this problem. Now imagine two surfaces which don't have any friction between them. Let's say two slabs of ice sliding over each other or two small or smooth pieces of ceramic sliding over each other. Human joints are infinitely more smooth than that. That is what gives you smooth motion. You're able to walk, do all kinds of sporting activities thanks to the lack of friction between the articulating surfaces in the human joint. When that friction is gone due to a disease or due to a trauma or due to a ligament injury, that's what we call arthritis. The lack of friction, which leads to grinding of the joint surfaces, which leads to pain, which leads to pain in the muscles and wasting of muscles, that is a term which encompasses arthritis. Speaking of types of arthritis, you could probably divide them into three broad categories. Inflammatory arthritis, non-inflammatory or degenerative arthritis, and post-traumatic arthritis. Inflammatory arthritis is when your body's own immune system acts against you. Due to some unidentified trigger, the immune system recognizes cartilage as some foreign entity and starts to destroy cartilage. Diseases under this category are often grouped under the broad term rheumatism. Non-inflammatory or degenerative arthritis is what one experiences as one gets older. The cartilage decreases in its thickness, it loses its water content and it becomes more vulnerable to injuries. So that's degenerative arthritis. Now, if you are unlucky to get a fracture which extends into a joint, which is not very uncommon these days due to high velocity of motor vehicle accidents, you get what is called a post-traumatic arthritis. And sometimes you needn't get a fracture. You can just get a ligament injury. And if the joint is unstable because of that ligament injury, the joint surfaces will abnormally grind against each other, resulting in arthritis. So these are the three broad kinds of arthritis. There are, of course, a lot more, but most of the arthritis can be grouped under these three broad categories. Symptoms of arthritis are very simple. You get pain. Previously, when the joint was moving in a painless manner, if the same joint starts giving you pain on movement, on weight bearing, if the joint starts getting deformed visibly, these are the common symptoms of arthritis, joint pain, joint instability, and joint deformity. Now, the commonest cause of arthritis is aging, so which practically is not a disease. As we get older, we are likely to lose water content in our cartilage and our cartilage is likely to get worn down because of the normal wear and tear that happens in day to day life. As I discussed in the types of arthritis, the one cause of arthritis is also an inflammatory arthritis, your own body's immune system acting against you. And another cause of arthritis, which we disconcertingly see in our young patients is injuries. Trauma, disrupting a joint, disrupting the ligaments that form the joint, causing abnormal movement of the joint surfaces can result in arthritis. Sadly, we are seeing a lot of kids getting affected by arthritis. It sounds counterintuitive, but yes, even children can get arthritis. One kind of arthritis that kids get is called a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis or a juvenile form of rheumatism. Again, it is due to a body's immunity acting against the body's cartilage. There are many subcategories within juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. But that apart, kids are participating more in sports these days and they are getting injured. After getting injured, if they don't seek timely medical help and attention, the joint instability resulting from ligament injuries and bone injuries can predispose even children to arthritis. Now, arthritis can be very easily prevented by leading an active lifestyle. If you are able to maintain your body weight within the given guidelines for your age and for your height, and if you are able to maintain a good muscle mass. Now, two common problems which crop up after the age of 40 or 45 are sarcopenia and osteopenia. Simply put, sarcopenia means loss of muscles and osteopenia means loss of bone mass. And the two best safeguards against both of these are exercise, 
which kind of exercise apart from the usual walking or running it is also recommended that you indulge in weight bearing exercise or resistance training at least 2 to 3 days in a week these are who guidelines and they are updated every year and they are available uh, for public view if you just uh, google them and you'll find them the who recommends 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per week two days of resistance training one day of flexibility training so simply put keep your weight under control and do do exercise regularly stay away from bad habits good health sometimes is subtraction of uh, bad habits than addition of good ones arthritis is generally diagnosed clinically whenever you have pain and difficulty with any joint or if you have observed recently a visible deformity coming from the joint seek help from your orthopedic surgeon We as orthopedic surgeons like to examine the joint clinically. We take them through a range of motion. We do tests upon them, clinical tests to check if the ligaments are functioning properly. In most instances, we will like to order an X-ray, and in some instances, we'd like to order more advanced imaging like a MRI or CT. And based on the combination of inputs that we receive from all these three modalities, we diagnose you with arthritis. Of course we like to do some blood tests as well but they are more comprehensively required for inflammatory arthritis for the other common non inflammatory or degenerative kind of arthritis a simple clinical examination and x-ray is often all that is required the treatment of arthritis is largely centered upon patient education we as clinicians like to educate our patients on what arthritis is and we encourage our patients to maintain their body weight overweight patients are encouraged to consult a dietitian in extreme instances they are encouraged to consult a bariatric surgeon to see if weight management can be done through surgical options we encourage all our patients to exercise exercise sometimes can be as simple as a moderate intensity walk In the traditional Indian system yoga is said to be a very very good form of knee exercise and there are a lot of yoga poses that one can comfortably do with knee arthritis one very underutilized form of exercise is swimming aquatic exercises are said to be very good for the knee because when you are immersed under water if you remember the archimedes principle that you studied in school times the body weight decreases and it increases the flexibility and allows you to do exercises which were probably not possible or very difficult on dry land so swimming is one activity which is very highly encouraged even if you don't know how to swim the mere act of walking inside a pool will be therapeutic for you Medical treatment of arthritis largely centers on relief from pain. There are certain types of arthritis like inflammatory arthritis wherein specific medications are available and they are sometimes best prescribed under the supervision of a rheumatologist. In extreme instances we like to look at surgical options. Broadly speaking there are three kinds of surgical options that we can give our patients. A keyhole procedure or arthroscopy is uh, sometimes performed to relieve our patients from mechanical symptoms due to torn menisci or torn ligaments. The other kind of surgery is a joint realignment surgery, also known medically as a osteotomy. Sometimes deformed legs can be realigned so that the weight distribution across both halves of the joint can be equalized and this can lead to prolongation of life of the joint. You might have heard of the term joint replacement which is very commonly done for end stage arthritis these options are called joint preservation and amongst them a key intervention is whenever you get a sports injury and a ligament tear as a result of that injury if your orthopedic surgeon advises you a ligament reconstruction do take it seriously it is not from the perspective of a short term window it is from the perspective of a long term preservation of joint we also like to inject our joints uh, we like to inject them sometimes with stem cells sometimes with lubricants and in some extreme instances injection of steroids are very helpful to tide over short periods of pain whenever there is a lot of joint swelling so these are uh, in a nutshell the various interventions we can do for arthritis of course they are best discussed directly face to face with your treating orthopedic surgeon so simple lifestyle modifications get moving if you can walk to a place walk to a place don't take a car use an excuse to move as much as you can exercise regularly you don't need to do a very strenuous kind of an exercise simply 15 to 20 minutes of exercise per day eat judiciously do not smoke do not consume alcohol follow simple advice like this and uh, probably you'll not get arthritis or at least the impact of arthritis won't be that bad i hope you like the content presented in this video i'd be delighted to answer any questions that you may have 
I would request you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can pass any comments uh, as questions and I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.